Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Califord. I'm making a video recording of the notes today because of school being delayed Wednesday morning. I want to make sure everyone has access to the notes so there's no um, problem there. So I might have you watch it in class. I might have you watch this for homework, but either way, everybody has the same notes. So I'm going to start off today talking about this movie. Some of you might have seen it. It's called The Sixth Sense. It's got Bruce Willis, and it's a M. Night Shyamalan movie with a really big twist at the end. I'm not going to ruin it, but I want to talk about it because we're going to be talking about your six, uh, senses today, and I want to say that you have a lot more than just six. Some people think that you only have five, um, but actually you have more than five, more than six senses. You have a lot more than that, and we're going to talk about some of them today and learn about uh, some more of them tomorrow, and we'll do some labs to kind of uh, reinforce what we're learning. So just to start off with, there's really two main types of senses. You have somatic senses, which is more of um, body senses. They're not as specialized as the ones that we're familiar with. Uh, sight, hearing, taste, smell, those are all called special senses, and they have special organs in order to receive that information from the outside world. So let's get into it today. First, I want to draw your attention to these couple words down here. See, they all kind of have the same ending. They all end in this word receptor. Okay, a receptor is it receives some sort of signal. Okay, but there's a couple different types of these signals and they're all stimulated by different, um, by different things. And it's in the name, what these receptors are stimulated by. So, for example, the chemoreceptor, this maybe sounds familiar, it's a chemical, uh, change in chemical concentration, right? It's, it's doing, dealing with chemicals. Okay, a pain receptor. Pain is actually just uh, tissue damage, but it's obviously the receptors responsible for you to feel pain. Think of a thermometer for thermoreceptors. Thermometer means it's dealing with temperature, so this is what is receiving the information about changes in temperature on the outside. Mechanoreceptors is going to be a change in pressure or movements in fluid. And then the last one is going to be a photoreceptor. Uh, think of a, a photograph is a picture captured with light. Photo means light, so these are going to be receptors stimulated by light. Okay, And there's all these different types of receptors and different uh, senses use different types of uh, receptors to take in information from the outside world world and we're going to talk about all of these in just a little bit here Okay, let me go uh, on to this slide What I really want to talk about are these two terms down at the bottom. Okay, we got projection which is Like let's say I pinch your arm You know exactly where that pinch sensation is coming from even with your eyes closed, right? I could pinch you your eyes are closed. You know where that pain is coming from that's what projection is, okay? It's the ability to know where a stimulus is coming from, okay? And then sensory adaptation, I like to t uh, talk about a little story that happened to me in high school. I was taking a class out in the trailers, and before school had started, a skunk had gone under the trailers, gotten trapped, sprayed its skunky smell, and then ended up dying. I guess it smelled so bad that it ended up killing itself. Well, nobody would go under the trailer to get the skunk's body. So just for months, the trailer smelled terrible. I mean, it smelled like a skunk. It smelled like a dying animal. It was awful. But I would go into class, and about 15 minutes into class, I would totally forget about the smell, right? I'm in there. It smells bad as soon as I get there. But after I'm waiting around for a little while, I don't even smell uh, that awful, that awful scent anymore. That's called sensory adaptation. You get used to something the more you're exposed to it. Okay, let's keep on going. So here are the two main divisions of your senses. You have somatic senses. Some things that fall under there are going to be touch and pressure, temperature and pain, and then special senses are more developed, uh, and they have s organs to help get that information from the outside world. So uh, you have the sense of smell, sense of taste, sense of hearing, sense of equilibrium, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and then your sense of vision. And we're going to talk about 
your somatic senses today and then just smell and taste of the special senses and save these for later. All right, somatic senses, touch and pressure. There are three kinds of receptors which sense mechanical forces that deform or displace tissue. Okay, all that means is there's these free nerve endings. If you look right here, all these yellow, uh, these are free nerve endings. And they're taking in information from the outside world, right? Well, you have different amounts of these in different parts of your body. Okay, so see how there's all these different free nerve endings here. This would allow you to have a lot of sensation from here. So if I were to lightly touch your skin, you would be able to feel it because of the high amount of free nerve endings here. If there weren't four of these free nerve endings, let's say there's just one, well, that's not going to be as sensitive to touch. I could uh, maybe easily brush over your skin and you wouldn't feel it because it's kind of bypassing the singular free nerve ending. The more free nerve endings you have, the more sensitive your sense of touch is in that area on your body. So for example, your hands are most likely going to have better, um, more sensitivity to touch than say the back of your neck because you really need all those uh you need all those free nerve endings in your fingers because they're more delicate, I guess, than your back of your neck. Okay, there's warm receptors, which are responsible for the sensation of feeling warm. And then there's also cold receptors, which uh, simulate the sensation of being cold. Okay, pain. Pain is pretty interesting. Pain hurts, right? Uh, that's kind of what we associate with pain. But pain's actually a good thing. Okay, if we didn't have this sense of pain, we would damage our bodies a lot more than we do with it. So let me give you an example. You put your hand accidentally, you're leaning over in the kitchen, you put your hand on a hot stove. Okay, immediately that pain would make you uh, pull your hand back and limit the amount of tissue damage done to your hand, right? It's only a split second, you might not even get any blisters, okay? Let's say, for example, you didn't have that sense of pain. You would touch that um, hot oven top, not feel pain, and just leave it there to the point where your hand would be completely unusable. You would burn all the muscle and everything off until you finally pulled your hand away. So pain is actually a good thing. Remember earlier I was talking about sensory adaptation where you get used to a stimulus? Like if you walk into a room with a bad smell, eventually you're going to get used to it. Pain does not do that, okay? Pain never goes away. If I pinched you long enough, it wouldn't get to the point where it wouldn't hurt anymore. You would be asking yourself, Mr. Caliper, like, please stop pinching me. That hurts. Eat no matter how long I did. Okay, there's a couple different types of pain. The one I want to talk about first is this thing called referred pain. Um... Think about projection. I talked about that earlier. If I pinch you, you know where that pinch is coming from. That's good. You know what you need to be concerned with. Referred pain is a pain that the, the actual pain is coming from somewhere different than where the injury is occurring. It's kind of complicated. But what happens most of the time is a heart attack. If you get a heart attack, you'll feel pain all the way down this left arm. Okay? Okay. Uh, so you might have this super painful feeling right here in your arm, but it's your heart that is uh, being damaged. And that's because those areas run up the same nerve to the brain, and the brain can't tell exactly where the signal's coming from. Okay, there's two types of pain. You have acute pain versus chronic pain. Acute pain is very short. Uh, it's like a paper cut. Okay, where chronic pain is over a very long period of time, uh, it's hard to pinpoint. You don't exactly know where it's coming from, and it's most likely from a long-term disease. Okay? All right, a few more slides I want to cover. Y'all uh, hang in there with me. I appreciate it. So we're going to talk about your sense of smell. Another name for that is olfaction. Your sense of smell is actually your sense of smell most associated with memory. So let's say you smell someone uh, baking cookies. 
your brain automatically goes back to when you were smelling cookies when you were younger and you were so excited. Uh, and it's just how the brain is uh, made, right? Your sense of smell where that is processed is very close to where your memories are held. And so they kind of uh, trigger one another. And uh, your sense of smell uses uh, different chemicals. So it's a chemoreceptor, right? It, it uses chemoreceptors. And then the loss of smell is called uh, anosmia. You can actually get to the point where you can't smell anything. That's called anosmia. My mom has that. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is your sense of taste. Your sense of taste is known as gustation. Uh, your, the organs that help you taste are called taste buds. And they're just a special type of epithelial tissue. And there's five types of taste you can experience. Uh, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami, which is a word for savory um, or like peppery almost. Flavor can result from one of the primary sensation, sensations or a combination of them. And I want to watch this video real quick. So y'all look over here. I kind of think this is funny for us to watch. These signature drinks are so sophisticated, I can tell they were so clean and easy to listen to either. The perfume of this mint limeade will pair perfectly with your tots. Yes, very good uh, citrus notes. What would you say, TJ? I like grape. My drink is cold. Expand upon that. Is it sweetness, sour, umami? Ooh, mommy, this is good. Ooh, mommy, this is good, y'all. It sure is. But I think that'll help you remember that umami is the uh, meaty or savory taste. Thank you all so 